Singleton all the way down in Waxahachie. Super easy to get to off of 287. There's actually a sign, you know, like sports complex this way, disc golf course that way. Uh, getting off the highway was kind of cool. Uh, there's 21 holes out here. We did 3.7 on U-Disc and hole one here is just over this stump. Back there in the woods looks like it's a little right to left skip shot. Yeah, let's check it out. It was round two of today, so it's the only excuse I have. So, we'll see how it goes. Hole one, 285 feet. I don't know if these trees are a mando off the tee, but I'm not gonna mess with them. Throw my watermelon hex. Just right over there, hopefully. a good stop by the tree. A little low. So we've received a little bit of rain recently, but here on hole one this course is looking good so far. can see how this place would turn into a mud pit though. It's kind of got that same mud that McCord Park has. Hole two, 500 feet. Looks like there's a bad landing zone. There was someone looking for a disc it looked like. So I'm just gonna lay up with a putter. You know it's 500 feet. Just kind of pitch out. Hopefully get into a decent spot. Play this one for a three. It's actually a par four, so you got room to lay up one. So it is not 500 feet. Overstable mid off the tee would have been the way to go. There might be a little creek or something right there. We're just gonna chip one up. Play crash. Eh. Still put at it. All right, for the three. Thank you, tree. So, when playing here, trust U disc a little bit more than the T signs because hole two said it was a 500 foot par four, and U disc said 334 foot par three, and that would be accurate. It was just a putter putter shot because I laid up thinking it was like a big par four with a bunch of danger in the middle. Anyways, on to hole three, which there's also a dis difference on the T sign. It says it's 350, you just says 277. So let's see. I'll go with my taco. Let's try and kind of air bounce it under this branch. I think it's in the woods to the left. Oh yeah, if it's where I think it is, that's gonna be great. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I was worried I got too aggressive because the creek is over here on the left side still. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. Oh, sit, 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 no! This poor putter has been in the water twice today now. Hole four is a long one. T sign says 400 feet. U disc says 490. Pond behind. And we're gonna wait for these walkers. It's like they know. It keeps looking back at me. so low. That was so bad. <sighs> Not meant to be. Go 
taco again. It's a nice spike hyzer. Come on, push, push, push. Hopefully that's a putt. It's kind of a pretty spot. If I do say so myself. Sweet layup, man. This basket is pretty close to the water though, so that's why I'm including my tap in. Football though, right? Hole five coming in just under 300 feet over the water. I'm gonna throw that taco again. Just try and sneak around that dying or dead tree. Get on the dance floor. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Come on. Oh, deep, but redirected. Not bad. I've been liking these 20, 25 footers today. I haven't been making very many of them though. Hole six, another blind one in the trees next to the creek. We're starting to get a little repetitive here. You can see it when you're walking up hole four. I just didn't take a good note of it, so I'm gonna throw my bobcat. Hopefully you get close. That's good. So I just threw it a little too high, so I cut it a little short. Well, Kevin Jones straddle putt. Hopefully I make it. Tailwind. Player two. Hole seven. About 300 feet. Looks pretty straight. U-disc and the T-sign both kind of show a left to right hole. So I'm a little confused. Hopefully this isn't the wrong basket. But that's why we're here. Yeah, forehand flex would definitely shape a little better, but is what it is. So if you have a terrible tee shot like I just did, this is what you're looking at. And I'm gonna try a little zone forehand, just pitch it up. There is a little bit of a backstop on this green if you keep it low enough, so that's the good news at least. But not that low. Oh man. Hopefully you can hear me over the construction noise. If you have an okay drive, this is probably where you would end up. There are some low spots with water. You can tell it gets muddy out here. This is probably one of the parts of the course that you want to avoid after a rain. Still got about a 60 footer. Not ideal, but a putt for a bogey. Or if you have a really good drive, this is probably where you would end up. In this little bowl right here collects things right in front of the basket for you. Tough four. Hole eight. This one's a tricky one. High 300s, par three, a little chicane. The basket's basically on the back side of those woods. Force, flex, forehand is probably the throw, but we don't have that in our arsenal for this distance. So we're gonna throw a neutral mid-range layup. Hopefully have a look at it, get a, get out of here with a car. <laughs> Couldn't have drawn that up any better. To plan at least, we'll see how it plays out. There's my drive. I thought that was the basket. Basket's right here, so I basically overthrew it. I'm a little pinched behind some trees. Car's not bad. 
hole nine, about 330 feet. It is on a slanted green, so a big hyzer. It's gonna wanna work across the face of the basket. It makes it kinda interesting. We're gonna go alpha wide hyzer. Should get there. A little short, a little left. Sat. Hole 10, about 340 feet. Creek on the right. Out of the trees here, so it's a little tough to get a wind read. Try this fission time lapse. It's kind of domey. It's also 164. But curious if I hyzer flip it softly, what it will what it will do. Fly like a time lapse. That's the most stable that disc has flown <laughs> all day. Well, you can kind of access the back side of the green by just throwing a hyzer like I did. So we'll see if it pays off. Hole 11, 315 feet that way, creek working its way all the way around the hole. So this is an interesting one. Interesting, to say the least. I'm probably gonna just chip chip. Well, forehand, I don't feel like getting aggressive here. Also a bit of a headwind. Hopefully I can throw this forehand hyzer. Oh. Boosh. Dang it. Second time in the drink for this round so shallow that I was able to just step into the creek and get it, but the creek still does the same thing around the back side of the green. Same precariousness. Same error. Looks deep back there. So there's this nice healthy sandbar. So we're gonna say that I crossed in bounds. Down here, take my relief. See if I can tap in with a four. Five, dang it. Four zone. That creek's not so bad. Still turned a par three into a double bogey. Hole 12, just over 300 feet. Tight hole off the tee. This is the main pad. One thing I have not called out yet on this course is how many alternate pads, or may even be an alternate pad on every single hole, honestly. Um, we're just playing the main ones that A, have the T sign, and B, are on this smart layout on U-Disc. I'm gonna go with that alpha again, play the wide gap. Woo. Inside. Big skip, yikes. Not anywhere close to a good throw. In fact, I got a nice forward skip. If I got more of a flare skip, I'd be in the creek. It's about 12 feet that way. Circle two look here. Let's see if we can cash it in. Nope. A little too much oat. A little wobble, a little flut. Hole 13. It is short of that sidewalk back there. 170 feet on the right side of this tunnel fairway. Forehand zone has been working. It's been pushing a little straighter than I thought, so. Maybe we'll give that a whirl. Let's try and get it under those branches there. Oh, you dog. 
Not the worst. I punched through. I'm in that junk. And because I'm on the left side of the fairway, the gap is a little more open. So I can see the basket. Let's see if I can make something happen. Almost OB deep. Hole 14. About 200 feet over the sidewalk, up on a little berm. Just pretty much straight with a little bit of finish. We're gonna go bullet. Interesting. He shot disappeared into this depression. I had no idea where it went. Looks like there's a little slope behind, but nothing crazy. But uphill into a headwind. <sighs> Flop short. Hole 15, 285. The concrete for the sidewalk looks like it is just behind the basket, so you do not want to overthrow this thing. I'm gonna try hex nice and low. I'm gonna play Plinko against that sidewalk. Oh, too much hyzer. Might still be a putt though. Something tells me it's a common collection point. I can't see the basket at all. Okay, I'm gonna try this Annie window. Hi, Annie window. Hopefully that was good. Hole 16, 200 feet through some woods. Also over that sidewalk. So you do have a good line of sight. You can see quite a ways the sidewalk down to the right. You can see them coming, you can see down to the left. You just gotta pay attention, but. Not my favorite design element, thrown over sidewalks like this. But 200 feet, going bullet. Uh oh, sit, sit, sit. OB, take that line, take that relief. Hopefully we can save car. Yes. <laughs> Hole 17, that tree right in the middle of the screen is about 10 feet to the left of the basket. So it's just blind around the corner a little bit, about 225 down there. Throw the lobster, I think. I think that was good. Is that good? Hole 18, about 400 feet. Sidewalk, Obi left the whole way and low ceiling off the tee. This is gonna be a tricky one. How aggressive do I wanna get? How about fishing time-lapse air shot? That's safe. Burger up shot. Hopefully it won't swing too much towards the OB. Oh, let's plop in the basket would be sweet. Boo. Hole 19, yep, bonus holes, baby. It's 420 feet, it's out there somewhere. Vision time lapse. Ooh, this one's more stable. I like. There's water in the trees down here to the right though, so. Danger. Oh, so close. 
U-disc says the whole 20 is about 312 feet right there. T-sign says 460. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm just gonna throw a big turnover, try and flirt with the woods. Let's see what happens and go lobster. Hopefully that's close. I have no idea. I'm really not sure where the basket is. Um, you can see it on the map. I'm like very close to it. Supposedly it should be like right there. I'm gonna count it as a two. This is kind of the wettest part of the course so maybe the basket fell over. I'm not really positive. It's very weird. Hole 21, final hole, about 450 out there. Got an island of trees on the left that's junk. Some stuff on the right that's junk. I'm tempted to throw that flippier time lapse. That's what we're gonna do. Thing's got some nice dome to it. Try and get this thing to go. That's something. All right, the basket. This is not a bad landing zone, hitting this tree and dropping. Basket is just out of view around the corner. I'm gonna throw this 172 tantrum. See how it goes. Never thrown this before. It's like a 13 or 14 speed. I think I overthrew it. Jeez. This is not ideal. I thought I was putting. Throwing another upshot. <laughs> well, it was an unfortunate four to finish on. All right, so that's Brown Singleton. <sighs> I thought I was gonna love this course. There's some fun holes, there's some unique holes, there's some pretty holes, some challenging holes. Flow is a little weird. Maybe if I knew where all the blind baskets were, I would have enjoyed it more. The flow felt weird to me though. Um, kind of the opposite of Ash Creek. Ash Creek, I wasn't expecting to like it. And I would definitely make that 45 minute drive. This course, I thought I was gonna like it and I don't know that I would really wanna make the 45 minute drive. But if you live close to here, or you just wanna play somewhere new, it's worth coming. Hopefully this video helps so you kinda know where to not trust the T signs or where the blind baskets are. Maybe we'll give it another shot. Bring some fishing poles, hit that pond. Yes, yeah, so that's Brown Singleton. Thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.